Yo folks, welcome back. Bitwig Studio 6 is still in beta and we are at beta 9 at the moment. And it's probably or it's definitely the longest running beta for Bitwig Studio so far. But we also have a lot of features. They implemented a lot of new GUI stuff. And from that we have, of course, a lot of bugs to fix or they have a lot of bugs to fix. So it's no wonder. So it's expected. And the biggest question is probably, will they release a stable, a final version before Christmas? And my guess is no. Uh, my guess is they probably release this early next year, but maybe there's a chance, a small chance, a small window uh, that they release on Christmas Day or maybe before Christmas, but I doubt it. It's probably early next year. It's, it's my guess. Anyway, so um, Beta 7 was very long awaited. I think people waited for over two or three weeks before they released Beta 7. So then quickly after that, we had Beta 8 and Beta 9 and they implemented a lot of interesting things, in my opinion. Also things I had problems with in Beta 1, let's, let's put it this way. Not like bug fixes, more like um, stuff I wanted to have different and I want to show you some of the things here. So um, this is Beta 9 and what they implemented here, I think it was in Beta 7 or so, um, this mode here, it's called Flying Automation Lane. So back in Beta 1, we only had this button here, this Global Automation Mode, or I don't know how it's called, Global Automation, Automation Mode there. Yeah, it's, it's just called Automation Mode. So um, let's implement here some kind of clip. And let's use here my Melody Maker to make a quick uh, two octave sequence, something like this in C minor. And we maybe want to use here a polymer synthesizer and maybe a bit of convolution reverb and delay two. Okay. So let's use this here as a base so I can explain what's going on. Yeah, nice. Okay, so the global automation mode looks like this. We have like, the last touch parameter. You can see this on top and we can draw in here automation for uh, the cutoff because that's the last touch parameter, right? When we touch here the decay, you can see now it's switching to another parameter. So this is now decay. And I really didn't like this in beta one or when I made the stream, the, the first beta stream, uh, because the problem here is that you can only edit one parameter and you can't change the clip beneath the automation, right? You can't move it around or you can't cut it or something like this, right? That's what I do all the time when I'm editing, editing uh, automation and so on. So to that automation mode, we have now here this button, it's called a uh, flying automation lane. And this is on by default. And what this means is uh, when this is off, we have here a plus button because there is an automation here on audio too. And you can unfold this here because there is automation. But when this is on um, here, this is not a plus button anymore. You can see here basically the last touch, touch parameter, even though there is no automation here, it's always having here this unfold button which I kind of like. So, so now it's not switching between here it's plus and here it's unfolding. And when there's automation here, it's unfolding. When there's no automation, there's a plus button. So, right, so this is more consistent for me when this is on and this is on by default and I really like it. And you can see now here that on the top, more or less the last, last touched parameter. So when I touch here out, the output gain of this synthesizer, you can see this here on top. Or when I select this one here, it's now the voice level or this is velocity sensitivity and so on. So it kind of works like exactly how it worked in Bitwig Studio 5. And I really like this because now I can step in, select here my parameter, uh, draw an automation, move on to something different. Let's, let, let's automate this one. And below that you have a history of what you changed uh, recently. So it's a very nice overview. And when I'm done with automating here or drawing an automation, 
I can just close it and move on to another track or to something else, right? So it's very nice for me to work in this kind of um, way in Bitfix Studio 6 and they edit this here or um, yeah, edit this kind of flying automation lane. I really like it that we have this here. And also um, recording works now. So I have here a keyboard shortcut for yeah, recording automation. I switch this here to touch. That's at least how I like to do it. And then I can just automate your things while playing. So having this on touch here and then this automation recording here on my keyboard shortcut, it's so nice. I just let it play. I loop this, uh, I loop this loop <laughs> and I just record or fiddle around on certain knobs here to get some automation recorded. And then I have more like a natural feel to the sound. It's not so, you know, fixed anymore. So I really like to have this and here it's working now. Um, we had some problems in earlier beta versions where you couldn't record this automation. And I think it also works perfectly now here in the clip launcher. Um, so yeah, they kind of fixed this and I'm very happy I can use Bitwig Studio 6 now <laughs> without complaining. Um, they also added here something in the last version, which was my biggest complaint or the last biggest complaint after this automation stuff here. Um, and this is here in preferences uh, under settings uh, behavior and then you can see your defaults and then this thing here called automatically open new clips in detail editor panel and this is on by default and this means when you create a clip on the arranger or in the clip launcher and you double click to create it it automatically opens up here this editor down in the bottom half, which is, yeah, not something I want to do because I always want to edit uh, my notes in this editor. And then I want to see my instrument here or my synthesizer below that because I want to edit the notes. I want to edit the synthesizer. I want to edit here my automation. And, you know, everything is in sight. I never want to see the clips or the ranger and the notes down here. I think this is also how it works in Logic. I'm not sure. Maybe you can tell me in the comments down below. Uh, but I, yeah, I always had to basically create a clip. Then I had to switch back to the um, device view and then I had to go into the de detail editor every time I create a new clip, which is pretty annoying. So now we can go here to the settings behavior and use then defaults and uncheck this here. And now look at this, you can create clips and it just stays where it is, right? It's just one action. Before it was two actions, create a clip and then open up the editor. And now it's just one action again, like it was in Bitwig 5. You just, you only create a clip and that's it. And if you want to go into this bottom editor, you have to double click on the existing clip. So yeah, um, so it works like exactly uh, it worked before, which I'm very, very happy about. Okay, then in automations uh, or in automation lanes here, we had this problem before that when we automate something like um, this decay parameter here and we click once, uh, we had before, I think this was by default in hold value on hold mode here for this one thing. And then when you click the second uh, node in this automation, the first one changes to yeah a normal node. Um, so this is what was how it was before. But I think now we have basically let's me remove this here. Can we remove this actually? No, we can't del can't delete it. You have to delete instrument track. No, that's not what I want. Let's go back. Looks like you can't uh, remove here 
this anymore for some reason. So this this should be a bug, right? That you can't remove it. Uh, before you could remove it in Bitwig 5, now it's always something. Uh, but we have now a new parameter here, a new shortcut. We can uh, select the node in the automation and then uh, use H on the keyboard to uh, switch between hold and a normal, yeah, a normal uh, automation node. So what this means is you can just make multiple nodes here, select everything and then press H and you have a stepped uh, yeah, a stepped automation line, which is, yeah, kind of need to have this now. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty suspicious that now we can't delete yeah, actually the automation. So it looks like you have to have always one parameter. Oh, you can delete out. Okay, you can right click then on this. Yeah, uh, maybe it would be nice to have this also here on the lane itself. Right, when you draw something in, then you click right and you can can't actually delete here this lane, you have to click here, delete automation lane. Yeah, okay. So it's still in there, it's just missing here on the right click um, pop up, I guess. So this is what I mean, there are a lot of, uh, lot of these small things missing or not working correctly. Uh, but if you, if you don't pay attention, Bitwig 6 works, <laughs> works fine. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, that's that. There's also something they changed here with the um, uh, track headers. When you go to settings and let me see, user interface, uh, view, and then you have here arranger volume control. You can switch this from, from numeric to slider. So now we have a slider back down here, like it was in Bitwig 5. A lot of people complained also about this. Uh, so yeah, now we have the slider back. And I think you can also type in here, yeah, the numbers works. And if you don't like it, you can go back to numeric. And then the slider is gone and we have like this, this number here. So yeah, you can, you can decide what you prefer, basically. There's also something with the meta clips, or at least that's how they call it. When you put here multiple tracks into a group like this, and you have like here a clip and this is a meta clip. And the problem here is, I don't know if it's a problem or it's in, if, if, if it's intended. Um, so let's say you have a clip here and you have some automation on this clip and you move this clip around. You also move all the automation below this clip around, even though it's not inside of an automation clip. So we have new automation clips in Bitwig 6. Uh, so this kind of works, right? But then if you have a group here and you have, let's say, some kind of device on there and you want to automate here this, um, this volume, and then you move this meta clip around, um, the automation stays in place. I don't know if this is intended. Some people complained about this. A friend of mine, Skyans, is, you know, raging about this all the time. <laughs> Um, maybe it's intended, maybe this is uh, still missing, but I guess it should work exactly like it is, uh, like, like how it works on clips, on normal MIDI clips, note clips here. Um, so yeah, it works differently on meta clips. It's, 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 they pro hopefully fix this, right? They also added here something to the clip launcher. So uh, when you have like here this clip and you move it into the clip launcher, with all the automations, of course, here. Uh, we can hit play and maybe we just remove here this automation for now. Um, yeah, you can see it's playing here, right? And we have here this button called um, back to arranger clip or something like this. So if you don't want to use this clip launcher here, you can always click this, right? And then it plays this kind of uh, clip. And by the way, this is the most asked question here that people uh, accidentally click on a clip launcher and then this is grayed out and they have this closed, right? And then they wonder, oh, why is, not, why is this clip not playing, right? And they miss out here on these kind of buttons. You can also see here there's a kind of a GUI bug here. It's uh, not, yeah, it's not how it should be, I would say. <laughs> yeah, this is still a problem here. Um, 
So yeah, what I want to say is uh, we have this clip playing here and we have to go back to arranger playback here. And then when you hold down the alt key, it switches to this re-trigger thing here. And you can re-trigger basically the clip because sometimes um, people complained in, I think in the early beta, be, uh, beta versions that we had like the clip playing from certain positions inside of the clip. Now it re-triggers correctly. I think also when you push here the stop button and then hit play and then it plays from the beginning of the clip. But you can also use your alt key and then this switches to a re-trigger button and you can play it back from the start, from the beginning. I think you can also uh, push this here, of course, on the group for all the clips inside. So if you have multiple clips, you can re-trigger multiple clips at the same time, of course. So yeah, you can see here it's still a visual bug in there, but I hope they fix it. It's, it's not a big deal. We get this. Uh, also, before I forget it, um, when we switch here back to the arranger, and we go here to the editor, um, to the detail editor, or maybe I use here, maybe I use another audio clip. Maybe let's bring in here some kind of drum loop, put this here. Uh, and I select multiple selectors here with shift and then go into the detail editor. You can see that the, the, yeah, the drum loop down here and you can also see the notes on top. So we have like a layered editor. Uh, and we can change, of course, here the view. Let's say it's something to this, or maybe we only want to see here the, the drum loop. So they added this kind of small little arrow key. Can you see it down here uh, on, the, on the bottom left? And you can click this and you can go back to the previous states of the detail editor, right? This is not uh, an undo. We have the undo still here. It's more for the view when you change the view, right? You go here and here and you make some different settings, right? Or make some uh, adjustments here to the layering, uh, something like this, or you choose a different, you know, mode here. You can always go back here to the last state and browse through the views. So they added this here, I think a bit of six, six or seven. I don't know exactly. And yeah, there's a lot of small changes here and there. Um, these are the biggest one, at least for me. There are probably more. Um, it's so it's so many, so many small little changes. It's it's hard to cover everything. Uh, but I guess I do some kind of beginner tutorial for Bitwig Studio to go over everything. And this will be a probably a long, long video. Um, but yeah, I, I just waited out until they release Bitwig Studio 6 before I go into that. Uh, so I have the newest version for this kind of tutorial. Um, I just want to give you basically an update what's going on with uh, Bitwig Studio 6. Um, so yeah, like I said in the beginning, early next year, it's my guess, maybe there is a surprise release before Christmas, I doubt it, uh, but we will see. But a lot of good changes in beta 9. It feels really good to um, use Bitwig 6 for me now. Uh, automation and this uh, clip thing was the biggest gripe for me so far and they fixed it. Um, yeah, fun times. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, if you think Bitwig Studio releases before Christmas or exactly on Christmas day. Um, or what you hope for the future or what you think about this video, or if you like me, or if you don't like me, or whatever. <laughs> Leave a like, see you in the next video, bye.